we have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A new world order. Child sex trafficking. The deep state is trying to destroy Donald Trump's presidency. Loose the battle plans of heaven. It's all about control. Broadcasting live to the world now. It's the weekend vigilante, Sheila Zielinski. Today's program was made possible by the generous prayer and support of the faithful friends and partners of this ministry. Visit our new website at Sheila.media. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Sheila Zielinski Show. Listen, you're in for a treat today because I've wanted to get this gal on my show for quite a while. It is her first time on the program, hopefully one of many more, and I want to jump right into it because I know she has got a lot to cover. It is Dr. Pat Holliday. Dr. Pat, first of all, welcome to the program. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself and then just springboard into this incredible teaching and throw it back to me when you're ready, ma'am. Oh, well, I'm so excited. I've been watching some of your programs and boy, are you smart. (laughs) <laughs> I tell you, you, you have really been on a track to inform the body of Christ. I'll tell you, they, they are really blessed to have you, Sheila. And, and we've been praying for you because I know you must be under attack all the time. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but the way it started for me, I came out of politics back in 1970, and I ran for the state legislature. I was um, almost a state legislature, and I was the first woman running statewide as a conservative for politics. And back in my time, women were just beginning to make a little tiny ripple. So I've been through the revolutions of the women livers, I like to call them, the liberal women. We've seen America turn from a Christian nation to a heathen pagan nation. It was very painful to watch. But the most painful part to watch was the church as it was being invaded by people that the devil sent in to destroy it. And the deliverance ministry never evolved in our country. It still hasn't, for that matter. And so when God called me out of politics, I was just totally rejected by the uh, church. So I had to get a hold of Jesus very quickly. And Jesus led me into the deliverance ministry and also gave me a miracle ministry and a teaching ministry. So I've been around since the 70s. I started the church back in the 70s, when late 70s, when women were not hardly even out there doing anything. But praise God, God's calling women, and they need to obey the call. And a little word of advice, do not let the men take your ministry from you. They did not give you the anointing. I told them if Jesus wanted to take the anointing away from me, he could have it, (laughs) but I would never give it to them. And that's how I survived all of these 45 years or so. And so we were the first church up on the internet first ones that cast devils out over the radio. I've been around for a long time, and I just praise God for what I see him doing in Sheila's ministry, because uh, I can see uh, traces of myself in her, because uh, she just forges forth, (laughs) (laughs) and she just does things that I haven't seen many ladies do, and I just thank God for you. And we are adding you to our prayer chain. Praise the Lord. So the witchcraft ministry, uh, Dr. Sabrina and I were invited uh, to Ghana some many years ago by a bishop, and that bishop was a, a former head of witchcraft in that city that he lived in. His father was uh, sitting on the throne of that city at one time. I wrote a book, Witch Doctor and the Man, A City Under the Sea. It's up on Amazon. (laughs) It is a bestseller. But anyway, the book is a book that every deliverance minister should, should get. I could not have written that book if God had not 
put me in the deliverance ministry and then sent me to discover how witchcraft works. And back in those days, people in America, they didn't believe that witches were real. They didn't believe that Christians could get attacked from spirits. They didn't believe anything like that at all. There were only three or four deliverance ministries in the world, Derek Prince being one. But the point that I'm getting at is God began to show me and bring the people to me that were in witchcraft. So I wrote a book, The Walking Dead, back in those days, and it was a little family downstate, and that whole town was under the powers of witchcraft. Whenever we started dealing with that family, she was in a catatonic trance, and she was a little Methodist woman that was under the powers of three witches in that town. It's a story about how God delivered her and how God was really, really on the job teaching me things about defeating witchcraft. God will show you a lot, Sheila. He'll show you a lot if you're just sensitive to his spirit. But you go through a lot of deep warfare in your learning. And if he had not taken me into these places where very few people had traveled, I don't think that I'd probably even be alive today. Another one he took me through that I wrote a book on was Solitary Satanists. And it's about an American young man that was studying to be a minister. And this is probably in the 80s. And that young man, he sent away to get a, a, a book on witchcraft. He thought, I can teach on this. I can preach on this. And he began to get books from all over the world. And so that book is on his deliverance and how God led us on those. And so it's just things that after many years of ministry, you get to learn. And of course, when you go into the poor places in the world, third world countries, they're all under the powers of witchcraft. And you really do learn a lot from that too. But I could have never have written that book uh, Witch Doctor and the Man, A City Under the Sea, because he was talking about things that I had never heard about after being in the ministry more than 40 years. I mean, he told us about the city under the sea. Uh, you and I should talk about that sometime, because there's a whole city under the sea, and that's what rules over the world, those demons from under the sea. That's where Satan's throne is. And so it's it's been a very wild ride, to say the least. But being with Jesus has never been boring. The only people that are bored with Jesus are those that don't sell out. The only people that are bored with Jesus are those that never get to know him closely so that they can arrive at his throne and sit in heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, Sheila, we're here today, and I wanted to uh, talk about electromatic witchcraft. I've written a book that they can get up on Kindle. So that particular book is really, really for deliverance ministers, because you see, when you first discover it, and I understand that you're writing a book on it at this time, so you already know a lot of things, but you have to make it as simple as you can for deliverance ministries because they are here on this level and they haven't gone up higher. And there's so much that we need to know. You've got to, you've got to come higher and you've got to put your life before Jesus, and you've got to say, Jesus, teach me. And so Jesus is working. Now, what this is concerning is electronic witchcraft. When I first heard about it was back in the 80s, and Russia was delving into witchcraft, and they were using it in their government. They were using people that were psychics to go into foreign countries and go into their files and bring files back and uh, things that you could never even imagine that people can actually do. In 
terms of witchcraft in the deliverance ministry, in many of your ministries, they are just beginning to understand, some of them, that witches can soul travel. They can soul travel and they can connect cords and chains and they can control people from a distance. They can connect into those people's computers and into their cell phones and they can track them, for instance, and they can see you. They can tell where you are in the spiritual realms so that they can control you. But one thing, Bishop taught us this, What they did is they called themselves Christian agents, and they were actually Satan's agents. So the the minute a Christian began to backslide or go cold, they could immediately go into that church, befriend that person, and complete the highway for them to backslide. So the devil's side of spirituality is very much awake. God's people... There are a few of us that he has awakened. I call them Elijah's hidden army, and there's many of them. These are the people that are going to start. God's going to start putting out so that he can quickly educate the people that are already out there so that we can bring the harvest in before the rapture of the church. So this electronic witchcraft, it's coming directly from the government, and it involves so many different areas. If a minister, if a, if a deliverance minister is already at the level of being able to cast spirits out of witchcraft, God would have shown them a lot of things that they will be able to grasp a hold of this very quickly, I believe. But some deliverance ministry have never gone up to that level. You need to listen and you need to pray and ask God to open up your spiritual mind for spiritual teaching because you cannot understand this on a materialistic level. So what I do is I call it soul scaffolding of Christians. And it's being brought through what Sheila will immediately know because she does a lot of study and I've seen her work, the New Age Movement. And what the New Age Movement did is they called it the plan. And it's being run by the global elite. What they brought forth is all pathways lead to God. And they were able to bring that doctrine into the Christian church and take the Bible out of the Christian church, place in the Christian church Bibles that the Illuminati printed, and they took away the meat of the Bible. And when I say the meat of the Bible, they took away Jesus Christ, his crucifixion, and what his crucifixion means and how it brings a person into the kingdom of God and the deliverances, all of the vital things that a Christian has to know, and particularly ministers. They just walked into the church and took it out. And the pastor said, oh, my people can understand this. There's been people that haven't heard the word of God in 25 years. But this new age movement, all it is, is pure witchcraft. And what it involves is such things as ritualism, idolatry, reincarnation, fantasy books, games, white magic, black magic, sorcery, shamanism, occult symbols, objects, idols, worshiping of idols, psychology is a big thing, and UFOs. Now, I want to stop here and explain something so that you understand it. The Bible shows the reality of flying saucers, and it shows the reality also of the devil's flying saucers in Chronicles and Kings, and it shows the philosophy also of God and his host of angels coming on the scene and defeating powers of darkness, and it shows the powers of darkness 
taking control of whole cities and whole congregations. And you can read about Jezebel, and you can see that Jezebel took over the entire church at that time because the king married her, and she was a heathen pagan. And the king gave up his faith and went down her pathway. Well, she was able to take over that entire territory. Now, I believe that Christians can take over territories too, but that's another testimony. So these UFOs, what I don't believe is, is that they are aliens from a different planet. Now, the government had a plan called Blue Beam back in the 80s where they were going to fake a rapture of the church through blue beams and being able to shoot holographs up into the sky. And I did some research on that many years ago. And what this entails, and we're talking about electronic, magnetic witchcraft, is uh, Satan worship, astrology, horoscopes, tarot card readings, Ouija boards, palm readings, firewalking, seances, mediums, spirits, channeling, holistic medicines, physical tests, sports. Do you know that the witchcraft powers in America had total control over the NFL under Obama? And what Trump is doing and has done is he has disconnected the NFL from the powers of the former government. Trump is doing a lot of things, and someday maybe we can talk about that. But now, guided imagery and visualization. Now, all of these are supernatural witchcraft powers that any little corner witch uses. However, the difference is this. In electronic magnetic witchcraft, what it means is is there is an educated, refined witch or wizard that is pulling the strings to release that on one individual or on a group of individuals or over a city or over a country. They know how to use these powers, and that's why they were winning the war. However, God has been training people to be able to rise up in supernatural warfare and defeat the powers of these people that have been trained in the governments so that they were almost ready to win. If Hillary Clinton had won the presidency of the United States of America, we may not even be here talking to you because they did have a World War III planned where they were going to destroy 90% of the people And what they wanted to do is take control over the world by going down into their underground cities. We would all be dead. And then when it was time, they could come out of their underground cities and rule the world with Satan. That was their plan. And they were almost there. But God has intervened. And that's a very important message that is leaking out little bit by little bit right now. You're going to go into shock in the days ahead because God is releasing things. So now, electronic witchcraft works through the electronic equipment, which will be your cell phones, your computers, and your televisions computer games, the movies, even over YouTube, you need to protect yourself. When you go up on YouTube, cover your mind with the blood of Jesus because they can get in touch with your mind through wireless technology. You can unplug your computer, uh, you can unplug your phone, but they can still be in contact with you. So it works and it's called bioelectricity. A Satanist explains bioelectricity as he understands it from a paranormal viewpoint. He says that it is known as a life force, such as an energy, prana, the aria, the spirit with power. There's many 
terminologies that a wizard or a witch will use to describe this uh, energy, as they call it. And they've been able to bring it to the level of creating a new form of witchcraft. Now, in the book, uh, Witch Doctor and the Man, City Under the Sea, the bishop told us that they received computers under the sea before they ever appeared up on land. Now, he had been saved as long as I had back in the 70s, and his, his salvation was supernatural. He said that they would give them computers, and they would train them how to use the computer. It was their job to make that particular Christian fall, and uh, they would watch them from their home through the computer. Now, we're talking about 1970s. He said it was before the computer ever came to the land. The uh, bioelectronics, this was invented by a man called Tesla. And Tesla's um, life, he tells that he was visited by many aliens. Many devils is what I would call that. And just as the devils taught those natives over there in Africa how to use computers and use them supernaturally and spiritually, I believe Tesla was a student, direct student of Satan. I believe that. So now let's get back to this. Bioelectricity determines the physical, psychological, and spiritual condition of a person. Now, witchcraft, if a witch is working powers on you, they can soul travel. Their spirits can leave their bodies and they can go any place in the world. And some of them claim that they even go to foreign planets. But there's a silver cord that connects their spirit to their physical body. And if they come out of their body, and if that, if that cord is disconnected from their body, which I think it's connected right at their navel, by the way, if it's, if it's disconnected, they will die. When we were in Africa, we heard all kinds of stories about things like this. We heard about a woman that was uh, selling in the uh, flea markets over there. She was uh, selling witchcraft things, and the Christians began to pray about that woman. And one day, they found a crab over in the corner where she sold her stuff. They can turn themselves into animals and things like that. So they knew that she must be a witch. They went to her house, and sure enough, she was dead. And we can tell you many stories about things like that. So it is supernatural, and they can do things that you've never heard. So... Our bodies are uh, made up of electricity. We are like a computer, actually. And uh, so they're able to attack us through bioelectricity, and they're able to do it from a distance. And they've just combined witchcraft with the machines, which they're telling us they're going to do <laughs> in their books and in their writings. Now, this, uh, this uh, witch goes on to d describe demonic powers of darkness are, are messing with the, the whole human race, which means uh, bioelectricity manipulation. So they are manipulating us from places where their wizards are sitting and they're working these powers to do things physically, mentally, and spiritually to us. The power to manipulate all bioelectricity energy fields. It involves a combination of electricity manipulation and biological manipulation. And it's also called bioelectricity control, bioelectrokinesis, control and manipulation, living electricity control and manipulation. So what they are actually doing to us is from a distance and from up close now. Because while we were sitting sleeping, they have put the cell towers up in all of our neighborhoods. 
where they can take immediate control over our minds. They have put the planes up into the air where they shoot out poisonous metals and invented bugs, supernaturally invented bugs and antibots. And uh, we've seen the bugs that they've invented. Uh, we've ministered to some of the Morganans people. Some people call it Magellan's disease, but it's coming out of the tails of the planes. Whole combination of stuff mixed in. Witches take things and they mix them into the cauldron under the devil's inspection. And whenever they do the ritualism, then the cauldron is ready to be used as sorcery. Medications and things that they put in your food and uh, things that will poison you and kill you. And when the scientists examined the, uh, the things that they put into the cauldron, they even found human blood. Witches and wizards always have to have blood mixed with their ritualisms. They have to have human blood or animal blood. Human blood has more power. And in the days to come, by the way, you're going to hear things that are going to shock you as they've already got about 17,000, I heard, last figure I heard, of people under indictments around the world uh, concerning the PETA gate where they've been taking young people, and some of them are high people in high places and in governments around the world, including our government, including the king and the prince, Rothschilds. They're taking children from all around the world, mostly from the poor families, mostly from families that have depended on the government to feed them. In Florida, for instance, I remember one year, 7,000 children were missing from the family planning groups in the government in the state of Florida. So it's all the way down to your local governments, your state governments, your national governments. And that's one of the things that tr Trump is zeroed tightly in. In addition to that, his executive order several weeks ago have shut their money sources down. So uh, Rothschild just this week sold his uh, farm where they would take little children out there and shoot them like animals. It was just unbelievable. But anyway, so the user can manipulate bioelectronic currents that exist within all aspects of the body, existing in the nervous system, the heart, the muscles. The user is capable of channeling their bioelectric energy into attacks or even drains of bioelectronic energies that may dwell within another human being. Now, what that means is if somebody is under bioelectronic attack, then you can be next to that person and be affected by the attack because your body's made of electricity too, just like a computer. The user is able to form constructs out of life force bioelectrical energy drained or stored. They find the person by sensing their bioelectronical presence. They scramble the personal bioelectronic rhythms to shock others. Now, the planes, the chemtrails, one of the things that they do when they cover a city, the contents of their cauldron that they're emptying over that city, what it does also, it releases little tiny pieces of crystals. It releases strings and uh, different things. And what it does is it falls on you and it makes you like a radio receiver to the satellites up in the sky. And when you come out of your house, you will be like a walking antenna for them. They can follow you, trace you anywhere you want to in the world. There's no place to hide. Amen? Uh, so what happens is they're applying to you a bioelectric aura. 
electrical wall crawling, electricity generation, electroreception, neutral impulse manipulation, and neural vampirism. Now, in witchcraft in Africa, they know about vampire witchcraft because they are blood-eating people. Witches and wizards have to eat human blood. They have spirits of vampirism. What we're talking about now are comic strips. Electro, that's from Marvel comic strips. Wasp, W-A-S-P, that's from Marvel. Spider-Man, Scanner, Stinger, Draconis. So now what I just described to you was this. You know that you got your computer games and you've got your comic books. And isn't it interesting that your comic books tell you information that is happening right now that some of those comic books were written 40 years ago? I remember comic books that had a cloning in, in them 40 years ago, movies and they did a movie, black and white movie, that's how long ago it was, Paradise Island, as I can remember, that they had human beings in the tubes that they were making. And so, in other words, they have educated people through their playtime for many, many years, particularly the movies, comic books, and books, all kinds of different places. So that describes how they seem to be able to predict the future, for instance. You see, demons have a plan for the future. And so demons were able to go into the writers of these comic books, Superman and all of them, and plant these thoughts And we called it imagination. And so the person that was writing the comic books or Spider-Man or whatever, they were just extra talented people. That's the way the devil was working before we had the wireless computers and TVs and all of that stuff. So now the witchcraft is what I call modern technologies, modern witchcraft technologies. And demons use human agents. Devils cannot make any decisions apart from a human being. And I can show you that over in uh, the book of Genesis. When the devil came to Eve, he had to convince her to break God's law for him to be able to get control of her. Because before she ate a piece of the fruit, what happened was she was under his direct control, God's control. I mean, they were in agreement together, God, Eve, and Adam. But she had to rebel. And once she rebelled, then she got under the control of the devil. And then he was able to tell her to go and tempt her husband. And when she went and tempted her husband, then he disobeyed God. And that's what's called the fall of mankind. Okay? And so the devil only has the power that human people give him because of the fact that the world was given to Adam and Eve as their kingdom. And this is why, Sheila, that whenever we as ministers take dominion over a demon, that's why he has to obey us, is because we are the owners of the world. And that's why devils and uh, Satanists and communists are so afraid of the Bible and so afraid of human beings, because if you get human beings praying against them, they are going to fall. And that's what's happening right now. So, Since the devil cannot do anything unless he uses a human, then the powers of electronic witchcraft has to have a human being that pushes the button to make the witchcraft work. These witches and wizards, they're men and women that work for the government that have been trained in witchcraft as well as in the technologies So the powers of darkness use human agents who bind together and operate in packs 
such as witchcraft, occult cults, secret societies, false Christian churches. And these groups are commonly used as a circle for attracting and amplifying what they call energy. The invisible powers that they are calling energy are demons or bewitching spirits manipulating modern technologies. They are caging people's minds, bodies, and spirits in the circle, in eternal rings, in triangles. And uh, these things, when you're in deliverance sessions, for instance, a person comes out of a, a coven, Well, you have to break the circle from around that person that keeps them encaged in that circle. If they have rings or if they have triangles or any kind of jewelry or gifts or things like that, there are demons that are attached to those things, and you have to break the powers uh, over those and have the person to get rid of all of the things that have been given to them through their leaders. So you see, the witchcraft that you're facing in modern technology, it works exactly as the witchcraft on the regular witches and wizards do on the earth, is that they are just sending their powers through wireless technologies. And the devils come right through the technologies. Now, if somebody were to show you a map of the world, the supernatural world that has been mapped out over the centuries by the demons, they have supernatural highways that they travel on. And these supernatural highways that they travel on are like real highways Like I-95, 295, you want to go to Pat Holliday's house, you get on there and you take a map and you go right there. That is in the supernatural realm, they have ley lines that they travel on. Also, they have cords, supernatural cords, garlands, chains, things that snares, things that you read about in the Bible that they can throw at you and on you and chain you, cage you, so that you are entrapped in their powers. Well, the people that are entrapped into these witchcraft technologies have to be broken free. Now, we have ministered to people in Morgellons disease, and In ministering to people that you've never ministered to before, God will take the knowledge that you have and he'll help you to minister to those people. And that's how we came across the new witchcraft modern technologies is because the little that we know we had to have experience to walk through these things to be able to tell you about them. And so let me uh, describe to you how... A wizard works witchcraft over a community. Uh, I ministered to a woman one time, and she bought this house. And uh, she called me, and her her whole entire family were under the powers of witchcraft. And they felt it when they bought the house and moved into the house. They came to Jacksonville, and I ministered to them here personally. And then they went back. And she and I talked on the phone many, many times. And one day she called me and she said the Lord told her to move her mother out of the room that she was in into another room. And she did. And she called me back and she said, this is weird. The Lord told us to clean the room and to throw the rugs away. She threw the rugs away. And underneath the rugs, there was carved into the floor, there was a circle carved, and there was another big circle carved, and there was a third circle carved. And she told me about that. And as we were talking back and forth, the Lord began to show me things. And I asked her, I said, do you know that man? Uh, Yes, she knew him. And I said, is he a mason? She said, yes, he's a mason. And the Lord showed me 
that he would stand in one of the circles, the demon would stand in the other circle, and in the third circle would be the person that they had caged, and that's where he did his rituals. He was working uh, powers over the entire community. So we bound all of that up, and her sister went in, and she sandpapered all of that out of the room, and we purified the room by the blood of Jesus and binding the devils and caging them. So you see, they cage people, but we cage them, and we cage the operator, the witch or the wizard, so that they can no longer work powers against you. Then what happens is, Your warfare becomes so much lighter until you will not even believe it. So we send those devils that are caged back seven times if it's a wizard or a warlock. If a dumb Christian is praying powers against you because they don't like you and you're not sure that they're into witchcraft or anything like that, just turn them over to Jesus and Jesus will judge them. You don't have to send spirits to people that you know in the body of Christ. You just say, she says she's a Christian, Jesus, judge her. She's coming against the ministry, you judge her. Yeah, that's good. Well, Dr. Pat... Before we get into some deliverance prayer here, you mentioned some really key prayer tips, and I would like you to give the listeners any other tips that you have on really how to pray effectively, any golden nuggets that you have, because again, your vast knowledge and your vast compendium of spiritual warfare techniques, I I think it'd be really wonderful for you to share that with the listeners. What we do, the very first thing is we teach them the power of the name of Jesus. And so uh, we teach them all the scriptures about it. And then we teach them that they can call on warring angels from the Father to surround them. They can call on the wall of fire of the Holy Ghost to surround them. And no devils can come through. And to be very honest with you, no devil has any right to touch you. Even if you fall into sin, you have a right to arrive at the foot of Jesus and ask for forgiveness, and he will protect you. And every devil that has trespassed your blood, we bind in Jesus' name. And we cage them, and we command them in the name of Jesus to cease their powers. We bind all reinforcing spirits that come, and we ask you, God, that you send the blood of Jesus to cover them, that you will send the warring angels to come to protect them and fight against these devils that are fighting against them. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to place the wall of fire of the Holy Spirit around their house. We bind the powers and the principalities from over their house, and we command them to cease and desist their work in Jesus' name. And Father, We thank you in the name of Jesus. We ask that you open up their minds so that they understand. We ask, God, that you teach them quickly so that they can defend themselves in Jesus' name. That's the way we kind of pray for them. If we're delivering them, we just go right after the devils like any other deliverance ministry. You want to do a mass deliverance? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, let's do it. Because, I mean, obviously we're talking today about electronic witchcraft and techno demons. Because, you know, it's something that affects every single person that's listening. I mean, there's so many layers to this. It's it's really important that we make that distinction. Well, it really is. But the most important thing is, like uh, I was explaining to you that the witchcraft comes from so many different places. They come from the uh, records that they've listened to over their lives, from little dolls that they've played with when they were little kids. They come from the toys. They come from just so many different sources, fortune tellers, if they've ever been to them. Now, if they, uh, like Disney World, will fill a kid up, and I saw your teaching on that is just absolutely wonderful. I've done a lot of things on Disney World, some books and things. I can tell you the the demons come from both sources, from the church, the pastors will take their kids to Disney World and all, you know all of that. 
comes from idolatry, it comes from family lines, uh, it comes from family curses, it comes from family witchcraft. But if they knowingly have done things, they need to confess that. And so let's just let's just cover a couple of things. If you've unknowingly have gotten involved in witchcraft, if you've knowingly gotten involved in it, then what you need to do is to repent. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to generally repent. And as you learn more and more and God shows you things, then you openly repent and ask God to deliver you, and he will deliver you, right? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over all modern technology witchcraft that has come upon the listeners, and we bind it up right now. We take authority over the television, over the telephone, over everything that they've done in the past and are doing right now. And Father, teach them that as they watch television or as they listen to the phone, that they need to cover themselves with the blood of Jesus and surround themselves with your divine protection. And Father God, we all go on the phone. Uh, You use the computers also as you're doing it today. So, Lord, teach us how to protect ourselves from the technology taking advantage of us also. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bind up every devil of technology. All of the technology that's on our streets, those um, poles that they're putting up, proles, whatever they call them, all of these areas that we don't even know about, the planes that fly over, the chemtrails. We just cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that you can deliver us. Now, Father, we confess that we listen to rock music, that we played with toys that infected us, that we did things when we grew up sexually, and we did things in witchcraft that we didn't even know. So we put our lives under the blood, and we ask for your divine protection today. We thank you, Father, that you're able to overcome every single thing. So, Satan, we bind you of all contagious spiritual diseases. We bind you from mystical diseases and creatures. We bind the strong man, Satan, bind you and all of the creatures and devils and things that you would send our way. We ask you, God, that you open up our eyes so that we can see and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us tonight. We bind up the spirit of idolatry, Disney World, All of the times that we've watched their movies, watched their cartoons, read their books, been out to Disney World, we bind every devil of fantasy in Jesus' name, imagination devils in Jesus' name. The gay days that they've had out there, that when we visited them, all of the gay demons that they've released in their products in Jesus' name. All of the transforming thinking that they've uh, included in their subliminals, in their movies, and over television, and all of the abominable themes, everything that has captured the minds of the children and the minds of the adults, all of the psychological things that they've implanted into our subconscious minds, the computer games, the spells that they have sent with the music and the spells with the rock bands and over the internet, all of the violence and evil, all of the promotions, both in Christian that have sold out in some of their games and books and television shows, we bind those up in the name of Jesus. All of the stargates, all of the demonic portals, all of the doorways and the gateways, all of the eye gates, the ear gates, the touch of the gates, the mouth gates, the mind gates that they've used, we close all of the gates, 
all of those chakras, we close them in Jesus' name. We break all of the ley lines in the name of Jesus, and we command every devil that knows our name to go into confusion, and we erase their minds and their memories of our address, our family's addresses, and we command them to go into total confusion, and we bind them and cage them in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, God, that you said that we could have the mind of Christ. Lord, you said also that you have not given us a mind of confusion, but you've given us a sound mind of love and power. In Jesus' name, all religious confusion leave us right now. In Jesus' name, every prophecy, every church ministry that we've been in that has not been of you, we bind them. Every false prophet, every false prophetess, we bind it. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we release our minds into your care and we command fear to leave us right now. In Jesus' name. All of these spirits that have been named, we command that they leave in Jesus' name. Just open up your mouth real big and cough right down to the pit of your stomach. And what the cough means, it means that you are in agreement with this prayer over your life. And they'll come up. We cut all of the cords. We cut all of the yokes, the snares, and the chains. We command in the name of Jesus, the snake spirits right now, a Leviathan. We cut all of your seven cords, your tails, and we command you to leave. We command Kundalini. We command your head to be cut off, your tails. We command you to leave. All of the uh, python spirits, we bind you up, you will loose the people, we cut you in a million pieces, and you leave and go into the cage. All the poisonous snakes, we cut you up, we command you to go into the cage. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, every devil that has been named, for as long a period of time as you require... They must release. They, If it takes a week, they'll be getting deliverance for a whole week. But whatever it takes, we believe that you are standing right in front of them, delivering them, because you said that you are the deliverer. And Father God, we give you the glory, Jesus, that your name is above every name. And in your name, we command every devil to leave now, instantly, right this second. In Jesus' name. And Father, we give you the glory for our sister. We give you the glory for her program, for her outreach, for the knowledge that you've given her, that you will guide her life, that the supernatural anointing will increase daily from this day forward, that you will give her spiritual eyes to see, spiritual ears to hear, in Jesus' name. And Father God, we thank you for her life. We thank you for her children. We thank you for the things that you have given her. We surround everything she owns. We surround everything that she has, every family connection that she has. We call them all into the kingdom of God. You gave us that promise in Acts 2, 38, 39, and we claim every living person to come into the kingdom. We ask you, God, that you send the warring angels out to fight against those devils that fight against her family. And we ask, God, that you open up the heavens and that you bless her finances as she has sacrificially given into your kingdom. Not only of finances, but I see that she has given into your kingdom her time. We call big givers into her ministry in the name of Jesus. We call them out of the false ministers and Father God convict them in their hearts. And instead of buying golden toilet seats for jet planes, we'll put it into your kingdom, God. And we give you the praise and the glory. And all the people say amen. And that means I agree in Jesus' name. Amen. What a very powerful prayer. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Holiday. 
Listen, I want to just let folks know, I want to give them your website here. It's MiracleInternetChurch.com, and you are on Blog Talk Radio Wednesday and Friday evenings at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. I've got that information, folks, linked in the description below. And I want to really thank you, Pat, for coming on the program, and I'm going to call you soon to come back on the program again. We've enjoyed this so much, and we want to thank you, Sheila. I want to find time to listen to some more of your stuff, too, because it's pretty good from what I'd heard. When you call, I will answer. Okay. God bless (laughs) you, God bless you. Folks, that was Dr. Pat Holliday. Her information is linked in the bio before. That's MiracleInternetChurch.com. Blog Talk Radio. Check it out Wednesdays and Fridays, 730 Eastern. Don't miss Again, that is linked below. And we are out of time. We have a fantastic lineup this week. Wednesday on the program, it is Monty Mulkey. And you're in for a real treat. This Friday, it is the one and only Dr. Michael Lake. You're going to definitely want to be tuned in for that. We'll see you real soon. Good night and God bless.